Welcome to the special offering of Your Neighbor, a Priest, where we're journeying together each week, exploring in roughly five minutes or less a different element of the Episcopal Church. This week, the concept of progressive orthodoxy. The Episcopal Church is perhaps most famously or infamously known for being the church with the gay bishop. This pivotal moment in the history of the church occurred in 2003, and while it sent shockwaves throughout much of Christendom, and still can be felt in the Episcopal Church today, that moment is not a defining trait of the Episcopal Church. Yes, the Episcopal Church ordains LGBTQ plus individuals, including as bishops. Yes, the Episcopal Church ordains women, including as bishops. Yes, the Episcopal Church performs marriages for LGBTQ plus individuals. Yes, the Episcopal Church welcomes you if you're divorced. We'll even perform a marriage for you with your new partner if you're willing to enter into the premarital process we ask of all interested couples. While each of these items have been controversial at best in the history of the Episcopal Church, and particularly in Christendom at large, each of these actions were taken based on the prayerful discernment of the larger church body, listening for the movement of the Holy Spirit, and looking to strike balance in the via media, utilizing that analogy of the three-legged stool I discussed in the previous episode. And each time that these decisions were made, it ultimately came down to realization that the orthodox, that is the traditionally accepted practice of faith, thing to do would be to listen to the Holy Spirit and more fully welcome in the body of Christ into the life and work and rights of the church. In 2022, the Episcopal Church can say that its doors, sacraments, sacramental rites, positions of leadership, both lay and ordained, are all truly open to all who count themselves, who wish to count themselves, as members of the body of Christ that we call the Episcopal Church. There really couldn't be anything more orthodox than that. In addition to these decisions of religious inclusion, the Episcopal Church is sometimes attacked for being a liberal church due to our work with and advocacy for the homeless and hungry, our dedication to the work of racial reconciliation within our church and among our communities, and our commitment to the care of creation in addressing the global catastrophe that is climate change. There's often pushback against clergy in particular for addressing these ministry areas as bringing politics into the pulpit. It's the reality of our day and age that nearly every aspect of our lives has become politicized in some way. So addressing the realities of our lives is political. But where the distinction lies for most clergy is to never engage in partisan politics from the pulpit, rather speaking solely to the call that we have received from Christ to care for our neighbor, to love God, love our neighbor as ourself. This includes living into Matthew chapter 25, where we are called to house and feed the stranger and the hungry, to care for the sick, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and imprisoned, to seek and see the humanity and dignity of every human being, every single person, and asking that that same humanity and dignity be recognized by others. One area that is talked about, even frequently talked about in conservative churches, that is not a common topic area, at least for preaching, in the Episcopal tradition, is the area of sex. Specifically, the expectations of submission by married women in relation to their husbands. We feel that this is an area where unhealthy relationship standards and expectations have been taught as if they come from God, but in reality are often coming from often flawed men. In the Episcopal Church, a faithful marriage is a marriage where each partner is wholly and fully respected as an independent person who has chosen to be in unity with another person. 
as we state in our marriage ceremony, the union of two people in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, where two equal halves make one whole with neither placed above the other, but rather as true equals that come together to meet all of their needs joined together in relationship, conversation, and agreement with one another. So if all of that said above makes the Episcopal Church a liberally progressive church, well then, so be it. Thank you for joining me this week as we've explored what progressive orthodoxy is and means for the Episcopal Church. I hope you'll join me next week as we explore the concept of the church calendar. Until then, may God's blessing be with you and know that my door is always open. If you have more questions, just drop me an email at nic at sslv.org and we can find a time to meet, share a cup of coffee or tea, and talk more about this church that I love.